this is me standing up for you. Never that. Now they mad about your interaction with the lady at the till. Go Woolworth. No, you looked at her too long. I'm sorry, what? Gaba Sadi. Just says. You are going to be the one that's going to provide this. And then she's going to have somebody else who's going to provide third. And then she's going to have somebody else who's going to provide third. I was out having lunch with my friends. And then some rando girl walked in and she looked at me. And I looked at her. Okay? And I looked at her. And she tried it. And I was like, jump, frog, jump. Jesus. That is a problem. You cannot be with someone who relies on you. To be happy? Never that. I can't. So we're going to be okay. Then proceeds to ignore you for two days. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is Zai. We're doing another real talk. And this time we are talking about the red flags in women. I tried to make this one very, very different to red flags in men. If you haven't watched that one yet, I'll put it somewhere here up here or i'll link it down in the description box below but the first one was red flags on men and i was wearing black okay i was absolutely just but today i'm wearing white because i'm hoping that women will listen to this and take something away from this and actually do better so, so welcome back to the channel thank you so much for choosing me over and over again if you do like the content that i do please do subscribe and join the jk family if you want to see more bonus content i also do have a membership space and the link for that one and how to join is down below as well in the description box below that was not correct grammar but either way we're here today we're going to be talking about the red flags in women that you need to look out for so if you're part of the rainbow gang the legitimate community or you like women or you you're a woman and maybe you're a red flag you're a walking red flag yourself do me a favor and watch this video maybe you can do some changes in 2024 because we all know that the dating pool is a little bit of a mess Yup. Okay, it's a little bit of a mess. And if you're dating, these are some of the things that you need to look out for. And if you are not and you're hetero and all of this, please make your boyfriend and your brother and your father and your your brother's cousin. Wako deep proof. Make sure that they watch this video because it might be helpful in some way, shape, or form so that they know that what they need to look out for when it comes to women as walking red flags. This one is a really, really important one because I feel like women tend to do this a lot. Watch out. A woman is a red flag when she is constantly trying to change you. She's trying to change how you do things, constantly in contradiction of what you do or what you say. They're constantly suggesting things that just don't make you you. These are the things that are just not you. You know, I think you should maybe change how you dress. I really don't think this, I don't think this is a good look for you. And then suddenly, no, you know, I really don't think that um, this job is doing it for you. I think maybe you should look at something maybe higher, maybe where you can earn a lot more or maybe something where you can, you know, just, yeah, yeah, no, I, I really don't like your friends. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like your friends. I really don't appreciate what they do. I really don't appreciate how they act around women. I really don't. You know, some of your family members are kind of weird. Yes. If she's constantly trying to change you or suggesting or saying things and, and, and behaving in a way that is contradictory to you and who you are and what's made you you over all these years and all of that, that woman is a walking red flag. You should not be with somebody who constantly wants to change you. There could be a partner that suggests certain things to you. 
you know, to kind of make you better, you know, because it's, there's no harm in somebody saying that I think you're really good at this. And I think that you should maybe try apply somewhere else and look around and maybe, you know, you want to change your, the status of your life and all of that. Maybe just shop around a little bit. They're not trying to change you. They're advising you with certain things. And you can say it once or twice. But if they're constantly humdrumming it in, constantly have everything negative under the sun to say about you, your life, how you conduct yourself, your family, your friends, this and that and the other, they're trying to change you. So they enjoy being with you, but they want to be with you in a way that conveniences them. Right? They want to be in a way, they, they want to be with you in a way that, that benefits them. This is a problem. This is a problem. Not to be mistaken with somebody who just advises from time to time that, you know what, I think you can do better with this. Or, you know what, whatever. But they are helping you. They're not necessarily um, uh, uh, making you feel bad about why you are you or about the people you surround yourself with. So watch out for women like that. Very, very dangerous. 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 Um, I'm also going to go as far as mentioning the jealousy one in this one. Jealousy is somebody wanting to control you, your behavior, in a way that it make it will be beneficial for them. Ah, uh, what a fun, man. Ah, uh, eh. Uh, oh, what? So they want to control how you behave, how you dress, how you look. They're jealous about any kind of interactions with any females in your life. Not just, oh my gosh, somebody at work, they've got something negative to say. Oh my gosh, you're with your cousin who happens to be a female. Now they want to know, how about why were you with her for so long? How about why the, 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 this? Now they're mad about your interaction with the lady at the till. Go Woolworth. No, you looked at her too long. I'm sorry, what? I looked at her too long. She was asking me how I'm going to pay and if I have a Woolworth card. So am I not supposed to look at her? I'm supposed to be like, um, no, I don't have a Woolworth card. Uh, here's my card, I'm gonna pay with this. Can I just tap, can I just, how? You need to be really careful about women who are controlling and exhibiting signs of severe jealousy. Like that's at the very, very end of the spectrum, right? This, this really severe form of jealousy. You need to be careful about women like that. You need to look out for women like that because they want you as far as they can throw you in terms of them and their convenience. And they're consistently jealous about any kind of interaction that you have with other women. Very problematic, those hands. Again, yeah. another similar one that I'm going to say is she's got a crazy history of cheating. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If she's going to be very secretive, okay, about where she's going, how she's doing this, who she's talking to on the phone, very secretive about her phone as well, very secretive about... And you know that she's got a history of cheating, sweetie. <laughs> You know you're not going to be the only one, right? You are going to be the one that's going to provide this, and then she's going to have somebody else who's going to provide third, and then she's going to have somebody else who's going to provide third, and everything is a transaction. Everything is a business transaction, my darling. So just because you think you might have her heart, and maybe you might, but she trying to get into somebody else's pockets... And she trying to get onto somebody else's jet. And everything, it's a transaction. You know she got to do some things to get access to those things, right? So if you have somebody who has a crazy history of cheating and you know this, and you think you're going to make her better, you're not. A woman who is constantly surrounded by drama and chaos is a red flag. Every single time when I issue, 
Every single time she's fighting with somebody at work and then tomorrow she was fighting with her brother and then tomorrow she's fighting with you and then tomorrow uh, something is happening in her life and now she's stressed and then tomorrow this is happening. Every single time she's got this ball of chaos and drama. Oh no, honey, I need to call you because you're, you will not believe how this girl looked at me. I was out having lunch with my friends and then some rando girl walked in and she looked at me and I looked at her, okay? And I looked at her and she tried it and I was like, jump, frog, jump. <laughs> if you want to do it, if you want to do it. And then she, suddenly she's fighting and then, stay away. Just find yourself somebody who's very comfortable with living a quiet life. Just no drama. Doesn't want to be around the the matoro kisi. Ukila bon itolele fela le rato. Oh my God, bole rato, Jesus. Itolele fela. Yo, but them balen right. Itolele fela kate o man. Tama sharp. Tama sharp. Fukok. Ah, eh, man. Ah, eh, man. Tung, ah, eh, man. Ah, eh. Ay, 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 ay. If she's constantly surrounded by drama and chaos and there's always something happening, if she's not going through spiritual warfare, then she needs to go to church, then she needs to go to work, then she's fighting with so-and-so, then at work they don't like her, they don't want to give her, there was some sort of issue with her KPI, then at this, she's always got something to say. There's never a point where she's just living and she's fine and she's grand. Nah. Because wherever the chaos is, it will follow her and then follow you into your relationship. She'll constantly try and find reason and fault in you and your relationship. She'll constantly try and whatever. Let me tell you something. Relationships are complex, okay? There'll be fights, there'll be disagreements, there'll be whatever. And everybody should be able to stand up for themselves. But if somebody's constantly surrounded by drama and chaos all the freaking time, how about a peace in Jay? In their lives, in their mind, how about a peace at all? That's a red flag. Trust. Trust. Maybe some of y'all are looking at this and you're watching this and you're like, damn, Katla was talking about my girlfriend. Damn. <laughs> Codependency. This is a huge problem. And I think it's one that really screams out a lot in terms of being a red flag in women than it does in men. Codependency is a real problem. If someone relies on you for their physical well-being, for their emotional well-being, for their financial well-being, mental well-being, if somebody constantly relies on you, your finances, whether, do you love me? Do you still love me? Are we still in this? <laughs> hey, Banna. Oh. Hey, Banna. <laughs> and if only you knew, do you know how I'm going through a really rough mental time right now? What are you gonna do about it? Mm, guys, the guy is so mm. The guy is so Constantly relying on you so much so that they don't even have any emotional regulation for themselves, for their lives, when it comes to you, this is a red flag. You can't have somebody who's constantly looking to you for everything. They're looking to you to smile. Good, they can't smile without you. They need you to pull up this side, pull up this side. Uh, now she can smile. What are you talking about? What in the world are you talking about? Hmm? No, you need to be very, very careful of someone who's going to constantly look to you for help, advice, assistance, whatever it may be. This is a red flag. You need to be with somebody who can stand on their own two feet, either good or bad. Yes, you will help them here and there, but you're not consistent. They don't need you to live. They don't need you to live. They don't need you to be right in their mental space. They don't need you to be okay with getting themselves to work every day because now all of a sudden they don't have a petrol and then they're asking you, please tell them. Everything is reliant on you. Even just their happiness is reliant on you. That is a problem. You cannot be with someone who relies on you to be happy. Never that. Suppose this
This is me standing up for you. Never that. Wangudwa. Never that. It's really, really bad because it shows that that person cannot emotionally regulate themselves. They, they do not possess emotional intelligence and maturity. You cannot be bombarding your partner with all of this stuff. You can't. And expecting them to be your savior at the end of the day for everything you're going through? My goodness, I need a savannah. She struggles to apologize and take accountability for her behavior. It's always your fault. It's always your fault, Mzwake. You know that you're the one who put me through this. Had it not been for you saying I love you, I wouldn't be having this mental breakdown. I wouldn't. Struggles to take any form of accountability for her behavior. She cannot say sorry. If she can't say, I'm sorry, I hurt your feelings. If she doesn't show any form of emotional awareness and accountability, emotional regulation and intelligence, you have a problem on your hands. Because now you have somebody who will say everything under the sun, say everything in the book to make you believe that they're not wrong. She's not gonna tell you that no, she had a problem with your friend. She's been having problem with your friend because your friends have, you know, um, 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 they're always out and about with you and all of that. No, she, she ain't gonna do that. Instead of actively sitting you down, calling your behavior out, also calling herself out. Okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I was, I was mad, but that doesn't take away from the fact that I hurt your feelings. And I'm really sorry. And I can take accountability to that. And I hope you forgive me. Whether you forgive them or not, that's all on you, man. If, if you don't want to forgive that person because you feel like, nah, they, they done gone overboard this time, that's fine. That's fine. That's all on you. But it will be very rare for you to find someone who knows how to emotionally regulate themselves and say that, you know what, even though it was in the heat of madness and in the heat of anger and in the heat of everything that I did this, but I can acknowledge and take accountability to the fact that I did you wrong here. This, this was, I, I really could have approached this argument differently. Gabasadi, just says, Maditaba, ke problem. Problem number one. Maditaba. Mm -mm -mm. Never that. Ooh, I love this one. When she's passive aggressive. <sighs> Women tend to do this a lot more than men do. So I had to throw it into the red flags of women. When she is passive aggressive. One moment, she's fine. It's fine. I, I understand. I understand. Then she proceeds to hit you with the silent treatment. She just said she understands. You just said you understand. Now, if you're understanding, suddenly you're shuppering Mzwake with silent treatment. Why? Yo, I understand. And the performance. Why? And let me tell you something about silent treatment, and I'll say it over and over again. Silent treatment can work positively, and it can work negatively. We all know this. Sometimes you need a moment to reflect. Sometimes you need a moment to step back from a certain situation, and you can be quiet for a little bit. But in a relationship, it shouldn't go beyond a day. I'm telling you, it shouldn't go beyond a day. A person should not be giving you silent treatment for beyond a day because then they are not being considerate and cognizant of how this form and this action is actually treating you, how it's impacting you. They are just saying, I'm going to be quiet for as long as I want to be quiet. Whether it impacts you or not, ain't none of my business. I'm more concerned about me. That is a problem. <laughs> In a relationship when silent treatment becomes negative that's when it's a problem but if you can take it for a little bit a couple of hours it's fine but either way i'm talking about passive aggressiveness see i digressed i digressed it's what i do but i'm talking about passive aggressiveness one moment she's like it's okay i love you i love you we fight all the time <sighs> we fight all the time but to be i i love you i i just 
I can't. Without you, I can't. I can't. So we're going to be okay. Then proceeds to ignore you for two days. Hi. Ebana. Hi, Masabat, Aman. Hi. She's like, okay, okay, I love you. No, we're going to get through this. We're definitely going to get. Then proceeds to call your friend and tell you about what you did. Then proceeds to call your mother and tell you about what you did. But I thought we were going to be grand, bro. What's this? What are you doing? Passive aggressiveness is a major, major problem. Right? So you make her mad. You take her out to dinner. You're like, listen, I want to take you out to dinner. I know you like going out. I know you like enjoying being out and about and all of this. I want to take you out to dinner. I want to apologize. I want to apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll go to dinner. Then proceeds to say nothing at dinner. Nothing. So do you have a good day? Yeah. Oh, what you do today? Oh, no, you just went to work. How about mum do? Passive aggression is a problem. Passion aggression. <laughs> Passiveness mixed with aggression is a major, major problem. And it's a red flag, especially in women. You need to know how to let it go. If you're going to say you forgive somebody for something, then forgive them and move forward. Forgive them and move forward. But if you're going to say... I love you, I forgive you, and then proceed to do harmful acts towards that person, like ignore them or give them the silent treatment, that's passive aggressiveness. And that is a problem in a relationship because then that person is not going to know how to regulate themselves in terms of how they come to you. You want to take control of the situation irrespective of how it impacts your partner. And that's not how relationships work. That's not how they work. Even though you know that you are trying to get yourself to a place where you're grand and whatever, but you need to be cognizant of the form of rejection that they might feel, the form of you don't care about them anymore, the form of confusion and being lost. Like, what does this mean now? You need to be really, really careful of that. And passive aggressiveness can do that. So you need to just watch out for that. Watch out for that, okay? Women tend to do this, okay? And I hate to say that women tend to do this, but men do it too. They do it. We're all equal here. We're all equal here. But when they're constantly, constantly bringing you down, when you're in a relationship with someone, they need to build you up. They have to build you up. They have to see the greatness in you. They have to see how, yes, you are going to get this. Yes, you're going to be a millionaire. When am I loving? Yes, you're going to do this. They constantly need to bring you up. How they bring you up, hey amen. They could bring you up in the bedroom. They could bring you up, <laughs> literally. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> they could bring you up in the bedroom. They could bring you up. And how they speak to you when times are good and how they they see how good looking you are and they're constantly complimenting you and they're like oh you look good today you look good today or this and this blah 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 they're constantly bringing you up they are not supposed to desecrate you or make you feel bad when they're constantly bringing you down that is a bad sign in a relationship that is a bad sign. Also, I think it's also a bad sign when they're constantly just doing nothing. They're not bringing you up. They're not bringing you down. They're not making you feel like, you know what? I love this person. I want the best for them. I want, they're not making you feel nothing. That's also a really bad sign in a relationship. But when they bring you down, negative things to say. I hate your friend. I hate the way you dressed. You don't look good today. You're looking kind of frumpy today. What's happening? You are... I got you slacking. I got you slacking. You are a problem. You da da da. If they're constantly bringing you down. Now, I say this with a huge, a tablespoon of salt because a lot of the time, couples are going to go into disagreements, okay? And everybody should be allowed the platform within the relationship to speak their mind. But it's not, it's not desecrating you. It's not literally bringing you down, like literally just saying the most hurtful things. It's not that, right? But you, as much as you are allowed to speak your piece, they should be allowed to speak their piece too. That's all I'm saying. Should we throw in one last one? Okay. Let's see. This 
I would like to say applies to men and women, but I'm going to throw it in here when they cannot resolve conflict. If you're with someone who struggles to resolve conflict, you're going to have a problem on your hands. You're absolutely going to have a problem on your hands because they'll either run away from it. They'll throw it under the rug. They're not going to want to address it ever. They're not going to whatever. Conflict resolution is one of the most important things for any kind of relationship. And now if you find yourself a woman who cannot conflict resolute, that's not a word. That's, that's, that does make sense. But if you cannot find somebody who cannot conflict resolute, you've got a problem on your hands. You've got a major, major problem on your hands because you're constantly going to keep going around and round in circles until somebody feels the need to just walk out. And they're walking out. Why? Because they, co they cannot conflict resolute. Because problems are going to happen. Disagreements are going to happen. But if you both cannot come to the party and you have a woman who's constantly going to bring you down, run away from the subject, run away, throw things under the rug, be passive aggressive, lack emotional regulation and emotional intelligence, all of this, not know when the conducive time to talk about things is and when it's not emotional regulation, emotional intelligence, you're going to have a problem. You need to be with somebody, both of you need to be in a space with somebody where you can resolve conflict amicably, maturely, and respectfully. And if you can't, then the relationship is not going to last very long. Because one person, and that could be due to many things. That could be due to emotional trauma. That could be due to the fact that you just don't want to. You just don't want to know or learn how to resolve conflict in a relationship setting because it makes you uncomfortable. That could be related to childhood trauma. That could be related to any form of emotional deregulation that you've got going on in your mind and in your heart and in your mental space that could be because of a lot of things but the whole point of being with a, in a relationship with someone is to grow with them so you may start out the relationship not knowing how to conflict resolute if that's even a thing i don't think it is i don't think it is you might start not knowing but if you're willing to learn, heal, and grow through the relationship, you'll learn it together. But if you don't want to, then you don't want to. Then you're not ready to be in a space where you have a relationship with someone where you can talk about the hard things, uh, um, 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 fight with one another without um, hurting each other, like severely, right? Severely, because we hurt each other in ways that we're not even aware that we're hurting each other. But if the other person raises it, then you can comfortably say, I do apologize for saying that and this, that and the other. But if they don't, it's a problem. It's a red flag. All right, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What are some of your red flags when it comes to women? Even if you're a woman and you've picked it up, what are some of your red flags? Help Botabo Libos Moseso. I get libo ntate adi wako kone. Eh, ntate adi wako kone. Help them. Help them. Tell us what the red flags are for women that you think that we need to know about. Until then, if you enjoyed the video, thank you so much. Please like, please subscribe, please join the JK family, the Just Got Leo family. And also, if you want to become a member, I do have a membership space with a lot of bonus content on there. I think right now we're sitting on 35 videos or something like that. So it's a lot of content for you to consume. The link to join is down below. And and I'm gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. Comment, engage, repost it, show it online. I really don't mind. So, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. Until the next one, I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, sayonara.